Okay, next. Uh, it's time to deploy this newly uh, developed trained model that we can use to predict whether or not someone will purchase a bike and make it consumable by someone who could get some value out of it. Now, in another video, I've shown you how to use this published to gallery technique. This is just to share this uh, Azure ML Studio model with other ML Studio users so they can see what you've done and, and mess with it. You're going to submit that and it'll create it, it'll it post it to a public uh, website where they'll give me that URL so I can grade your assignments. Next, though, we want to uh, make this consumable by someone who doesn't need to know or understand what we've been doing here in this in this uh, uh, a, a predictive experiment. So, for example, I've got a salesperson. Um, maybe we're selling super high end bikes uh, and she or he wants to go visit. We've got an hour or two left to go visit some bike shops that we want to uh, start selling these bikes through. Uh, what they want to do is pick out of the 10 bike shops which one or two are most likely to uh, want our bikes or something like that. Or maybe I'm going directly to the customer and I've got some customer data and I want to pick who's most likely to buy the bikes, whatever. Typically, what we do is uh, make this prediction available in a some type of mobile app uh, or website or something like that. But uh, Azure allows us to also integrate this as an API that can be embedded in an Excel document, which is a much quicker way to uh, share this API with people. So here's how we're going to do this. Now, I've been running into problems, messing with this that I don't want to deal with with you guys. I think will make things a little bit more complicated. What I want to do is re-upload a copy of this data set that only has the columns that we want, these ones right here, and not deal with all of these extra ones over here. So uh, download or open up that uh, data file. Let me open mine real quick. Bike buyers right here. And remember, we uploaded it in the previous video as a CSV. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of the columns that I no longer want. Uh, we don't need these numeric versions of the columns anymore because Azure handles dummy codes just fine. Don't need those. Age homeowner, don't need that one. We still need purchase bike numeric because in the example, we did a linear regression instead of a logistic regression, which can handle uh, this yes, no value over here. So we're gonna get rid of that. And I think that leaves us with everything we'll need. What I'll do is put this one over here just so it's at the end. I think that covers it. Okay, let's save this. Save as a CSV. You may have already had yours as a CSV. Comma separated values, bike buyers. Um, downloads, that's fine. Save the active sheet. Yep, close this out. Don't save. Let's come back here. No, not new. Go to data sets. Let's add a new one from local file. We just made it. It's right here. CSV. Yep. And let's say uh, numeric dependent variable. No other. Um, all other IVs in their original form. If you've been following along with all of my videos, and you'll know that we uh, took the original form, and when we were doing this stuff in Excel, uh, where we had to create dummy codes and stuff like that, we were transforming our independent variables from uh, text to numeric fields and things like that. But anyway, okay, uh, there. Oh, it's uploading right now. Oh, I got one under the same name. I should have renamed it. Okay, so it re-uploaded over the top of that one. Oh, well, that's fine. Back here to experiments. Let's go to our bike buyers model we were working on. I'm going to change this one out, get rid of that one. Well, it probably I probably wouldn't need to do that because it's the same one, the same name. But I'm, just in case, I'm going to pull it out, pull it back in. All right, so a couple of things. We're no longer going to need this select columns anymore because we only have those columns now because we got rid of all the other ones. So I'm going to get rid of that guy. We don't really need this summarized data now anymore either if once we're done with that. I like normalizing. I like using the z-scores, so let's stick with that. Z-scores where possible. Uh, split data will stay the same. 70-30 split. Train score. Evaluate. Cool. That's it. Let's go ahead and rerun this. 
So before we can deploy this into that Excel file, we got to make sure that this model has been completely run and every one of these has a green check. Let's chill and wait for that. I guess I could pause the video. Okay, there we go, all done. So next, come down here to set up web service. Let's get rid of that thing. Thank you. Set up web service, predictive web service recommended. I'll try that again. Okay, what it's going to do, it's going to split this experiment into two tabs. Our original experiment, which it calls a training experiment, and now this new uh, predictive experiment tab. So it sort of condensed some of these pills um, into those that are only needed, and we have this new one, web service input, web service output. So uh, a web service, another word for it, term for it, uh, is an API application programming interface. It's basically a bit of programming logic that's stored somewhere differently than the rest of our uh, you know, on some internet-based server, basically, or network-connected server. It's going to be stored somewhere from the rest of our program, though. So I could make an app or a website that can call this or use this web service or API by sending data into it as an input. It processes it, applies a transformation, scores a prediction, and then sends back out process data in the form of a prediction. So all APIs work this way. The only thing we want to do differently is right here, it's going to output both the prediction and all the input data. Just like when we ran score model back here in this training experiment. Let me show you what I mean. Back here, when we visualize score model, right click, visualize, it sends back to us all of the original data plus this scored label, the prediction of whether or not they're going to purchase a bike. All right, well, we don't need all of the input data. We only want that scored label. So what we're going to do instead is add a select columns. Right here, let's scroll down. Let's delete this, move that down a bit, move this in. So between the score data set and our output, we're going to tell it to only output that scored label, and that's all. Perfect. Okay, next step, we're going to run this thing. All right. Oh, did I do that in the stupid training experiment? Oh, gosh, Mark. Idiot. No. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to add it. Well, no, I didn't add it there. I added it back here. No, what? All right, that was really weird. Let me put this one back where it was. This is the training experiment. I thought it was over here. Let me check this one again. No, it's still there. Delete, connect, save, run. Every once in a while, I get these weird bugs. Let's let that finish running. Let's update the predictive web experiment. I didn't mean to add that right there. I wanted to do it in this predictive experiment side. Here we go. Select columns. There we go. I guess I just got to pay better attention to what I'm doing, huh? Launch column selector. We only want scored labels right here. Check. Uh, let's go ahead and run all this now. Sorry, just chilling, waiting here. Okay, let's deploy. So now the web service is prepared and ready. Now it's gonna actually create the code for it, develop a URL and a license key or a API key. So if I want my uh, web developer or app developer to be able to use this predictive model, I just need to give them this API key 
And you can click in here, there's a URL that you'll give them as well, but we'll cover that in a different video. For now, I want you just to download this Excel file right here. It says, hey, are you cool if we use some of your sample data as an example of how to use this workbook? Yes, we are, that's just fine. So let's download it. Um, we're actually gonna open it in Windows because from what I can tell, and maybe this isn't true and I just need to search Google for an answer, but from what I can tell, this API doesn't work in the Mac version of Excel. So we open this up, cancel that, I wait for a second, loading the API option. Huh, every once in a while this happens. Let me close this out and try opening it one more time. Okay, cancel, there we go. Here's the API, click on it. Schema, it says, here's the stuff that you've got to send in for this to work. Notice it still wants its purchase bike numeric. I'll address that in just a second. And then, oh, and also scroll down the output. It's only gonna output scored labels, not all the rest of the stuff. So let's close that out. Um, nice little use sample data button. Click on that and it says, here's an example of the data that you would send into it. We say, cool, well then let's run predictions for those things. Notice it just froze on me. Excel, this happens all the time for some reason. And the only way to fix it I've noticed is to minimize this and pull it back up. And now I can, now it's unfrozen. Who knows why? Anyway, um, I'm gonna select this table and click right here to use this. Yep, okay. That's now my input data and I do have headers right there. My output is going to go right here. Oh, I've frozen it again. Right there on M1, M1. And uh, I want it to bring back a header as well to put at the top of M1. So I hit my predict button, sends each of these records over and comes back with a prediction. So uh, for all of them, see how low these are? They're below 0.5. These are essentially all predicting um, know that they're not going to purchase a bike. Frozen again. Let's add in some of our own data here. Let's put in single female making good money. Um, put no kids, one car, age 28. Uh, graduate, professional, homeowner, we'll say yes. Give me distance one to two miles, Europe. Um, let's leave off purchase bike because we wouldn't know whether or not they purchased a bike and let's change this to M7. Okay, come down here, predict. Oh, duh, sorry. Ignore what I just did. The mistake I made, can I undo? Of course you can't. Why would it be able to undo? I forgot to change my input. Delete those, delete this. What I forgot to do is to tell it where my input prediction was coming from. Delete that. Grab all of this. Oops, no, this right here, yeah. Okay. Oh, what? what's going on? Come on, I'm not trying to do a formula. Okay, thank you. What did I do right there? Delete. There we go. Okay, let's try this again now. Tell it the range is right there. Data source not valid. Oh, it doesn't want the table. I just need to type in A7 to L7. There we go. It doesn't like those table names in there. There we go. All right, we don't want to include headers this time. We just want to print out to M7. Oh, I froze it again. Predict. Okay, so it does, I have to put something in here. Ignore that though, because it's not actually using that in the prediction. I just, just put in a zero because uh, it's gonna get, it, it wants this in my model, but it's going to ignore it when it actually runs a prediction. So it doesn't matter at all what you put right in there. Just come down here. Oh, so I gotta tell it to go all the way to M7. There we go. Now predict. 
Huh, what is it not liking here? Let's try this again. Oh, duh. My data does not have headers. My input data I'm setting in this column, this right here, there's not a header in it. Predict. There we go. Here's my prediction. Closer to one, yes, this person is going to purchase a bike. And I wonder if now, I, actually, I think I can leave that out. Let me delete this and do it over again. Nope, I do have to put something in there. So it doesn't matter what it is, though, because it's not going to be used. There we go. There's my prediction for new data. So this is how we use um, the model we've trained in an Excel file to uh, share our API with other people, anyone who has Excel.